All right, so we're here at the property. Just pulled up, we picked some apples out on the road when we first come in to give the deer a little bit more of a treat in the back. Uh, today, we're going to be working on adding a manual timer to the solar panel or the solar power box for the fountain. And then hopefully get the fountain to turn on and figure out how to do this timer. It's, it's kind of confusing. Let's get to it. I'm going to hop in the truck and get a few things and uh, we'll head over to the solar power box and I will show you guys what's going on. All right, I just want to explain what's going on here. This is our solar box. That is our panel that we still have not built a frame for uh, since this is just experimental. This box is just a cheap box from the parts store or the hardware store. In here we have a deep cycle 12 volt battery connected to a solar uh, charger, a regulator that runs to the solar panel and then runs to the battery. So that is constantly connected. It's probably hard to see, but we finally have high voltage. Then we have a 500 watt power inverter. And this box was built to take this extension cord right here and run the pond. We hooked it up and everything worked. However, the battery died. So I just wanna go over uh, how we had it hooked up before and why it died and then what we're gonna do to fix that. This here is a manual timer. Basically, you plug it into your wall, you set the time, and then you take these little pins and you push them down to the time that you want the power to be on. And this thing just goes and keeps track of time and then whenever the time gets to these little pins, uh, the power will kick on. And so I had this hooked up to the inverter and then I had that pump hooked up to this. Now the only thing that sucked about this setup was constantly 100% of the time the inverter had to be on. Now this inverter pulled more power than the charger could keep up with overnight which would kill the battery so it would be charging. Um, during the day and running so the just keeping this on 100 percent of the time was not an option so the next thing i looked up was maybe coming up with an arduino or a twino board or something that went in between the battery and the power inverter and would kick off and on and it would use let's say a six bolt reference well, that was okay, but then I ran into this. What we're going to do is hook this up to the battery, the 12 volt lead here. And then we're going, this is the switch side. So the switch side is basically going to, we're gonna splice the power, run it in and run it back out. So it says it can take up to a 250 volt, 16 amp, uh, so I'm a little skeptic because these <laughs> connectors here are just the quarter inch connectors and uh, we're going to be running the power inverter and ultimately our homemade um, pond fountain which was made out of a fifth horsepower sump pump. So that's that. Let's uh, go ahead and get started on this. All right, I wanna give you guys a rundown on the solar power box for the fountain. The first version of this box was pretty straightforward. We had a, a 12 volt deep cycle battery, an inverter, and a 100 watt solar panel. Solar panel obviously ran to the solar uh, charge controller, then tapped into the battery. 
And the idea was to use the inverter with a manual timer that we could then plug our DIY sump pump into for the fountain. However, what we ran into with this manual timer is the inverter needed to stay on 100% uh, of the time, even when I didn't need the power, but the inverter needed to stay on to operate this. Uh, what ended up happening was literally the first day, the battery was drained just from the power that the inverter used just to even be on, not even pulling power for the pump. So uh, what I opted to do this time was to go to a digital timer. And this timer uh, allows for 20 settings and it's a 12 volt DC um, timer that runs off of a 12 volt reference, which happened to be these two wires. And basically uh, these two wires on the right hand side are the power, the positive lead to the inverter. The way this works is you set the timer on this to, to turn on and whatever time you tell it to turn on and turn off, then what it'll do, it will basically supply power to the power side of the inverter and the inverter will turn on. So the entire system will turn on based off of this system. This system has a self battery or it can sustain itself for I believe three weeks without a 12 volt reference, but the battery charges off of this and doesn't use much power at all. What that did was alleviated the constant draw on the inverter. And literally the inverter, all I do is I leave the power on, on the inverter, and the timer will just kick off and on when I want it to. So at 3.30, this thing is supposed to shut off. And we're gonna see if the pond fountain shuts off. Get out my other phone here. The DIY solar power box with the timer. Five seconds. <laughs> oh, look at that. We have success. That did exactly what it was supposed to do. How awesome is that? We have it set now to run about 30 minutes every hour and it gives enough time for everything to charge up. Right now, I believe it's set to, to run at five. We're gonna work on the scheduling to make sure that we're working with optimal sun and the best times to uh, aerate the pond with the fountain. Ideally, I would love to have the fountain on all the time. However, when it comes to solar, we just can't do that with that setup that I have. I was actually looking at a bubbler setup, so. Anyways, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below on maybe some suggestions on how to make the box better. Until next time, guys, get outside, stay safe, and I will see you then.